Today is episode three of my brand new weekly feature where I'm going to share with you my latest purchases from the perfume parlour. I've got a seven bottle clone fragrance haul to go through with you all today uh, because one of these is a really rotten stinker and I didn't want to shortchange you, especially only one day before Christmas and all that. So grab yourself a brew, make yourself comfortable and let's find out what's good and what's not so good out of this little haul. Welcome to Mags Frags. Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much once again for tuning in to this Perfume Parlour episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is the third episode of my brand new weekly series that focuses on my latest purchases from the uh, Perfume Parlour. So if you haven't yet seen the other two in this series, uh, there's also a couple of others that I did before this series began. Uh, there is now a, a playlist on my channel's homepage which is dedicated just to the Perfume Parlour videos. So if you haven't yet seen those, please feel Feel free to, to go ahead and go and check those ones out too. Before I begin the rundown, if you're interested in picking up any of these bottles that feature in this video today for yourself, uh, the Perfume Parlour will be reopening and retaking orders from the 1st of January uh, 2022. So if you're looking to place an order, you can use my discount code, uh, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you'd be asked to create a login name and password. But once you've logged in and you've made all your purchases, your discount will automatically be applied at the checkout and as always guys uh, just a quick boring disclaimer um, I don't work for the perfume parlor and this video is in no way sponsored by them so all these opinions and everything I say about them are my own opinions uh, I'm not being paid to say anything to advertise for them uh, but I do however uh, receive a small commission just for recommending anybody to their website so by just clicking my link I get a little kickback but you also save you 10 percent uh, but you're also supporting the channel and just helping me to uh, bring you more free content in future. So I'm going to kick things off with a really interesting copy and this is called Goa and the perfume parlour code on this one is 1367. This is a copy of a fragrance from Zerzhov called Coro, which is an exclusive uh, fragrance to Selfridges in the UK. So therefore, it's probably not talked about as much as it should be. The top notes in this one are fruit notes. Uh, in the middle, we've got jasmine, oris root, iris and more fruit notes. Uh, and in the base, we've got amber, sandalwood, musk and vanilla. Yeah, so the reason I had to open up with this one is just simply because it's such a pleasant last minute surprise. Uh, I, I originally ordered a, a copy of Louis Vuitton's Ombre Nomade, uh, but I received an email from the perfume parlour saying that it was out of stock and would I like to receive a substitute bottle instead. So I had a quick look on the site, but I already had the Zerzhoff page open on, on, on another uh, window. So I thought I'll, I'll give this a go because I, I saw that it was um, an exclusive flanker, so I just pulled the trigger on it. Anyway, I'm glad that I did because because this one smells really good. It's really fruity, um, it's got like a candy sweetness though, it's very, very sweet. Uh, but we've also got some iris in there too, so when it dries down you get a slight powderiness. Uh, but this one's all about the fruits and it's like a, like a red berry fruit drink and it just smells ridiculously good. This is not masculine though and it's not sexy, uh, but it's just a very, very nice smell. And as soon as I can place an order again at the perfume parlour in the new year, I'm going to be ordering some wax melts in this kind of fragrance so I can scent my home with it. It is a, a unisex fragrance and it's fine for men to wear, but I reckon women are going to absolutely love this one. So be warned, fellas, um, if you buy a bottle of this, it's not going to last too long if you've got a wife and daughters in the house because they'll be having a cheeky spray for sure. Um, it's got a decent projection. You get a couple of hours and then it becomes more of a skin scent. Uh, but you'll still keep getting delicious wafts from it as, as, you, as you go through the day. But I would say that if you're not into your super sweet fragrances, then this one might not be for you. Uh, but I think this one's a great one and I think I'm, uh, I'm going to get through this one pretty quickly. Okay, up next we've got one called Wood Weave State and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1854. This one is a copy of Oud Satin Mood by Maison Francis Kirk Jan. The top notes in this one are agar wood, 
uh, in the mid we've got benzoin and bulgarian rose and the base notes we've got vanilla violet and turkish rose yeah, so it's uh, no surprise that with the Bulgarian rose and the Turkish rose listed in the note breakdown, the most dominant accord you're going to get from this is the rose. Uh, but it's a very smooth and velvety rose and smells really elegant and classy. As you probably know if you've watched a, a few of my other videos, I'm not the biggest fan of rose fragrances. Uh, but I've got to say this is by far the best one that I've tried. And I dare to say that I would even probably consider wearing this if I was getting dressed up for a bit of a posh night out. The oud is subtle and it's it's not skanky or overpowering and when it's blended with the violet you just get a gentle powderiness that gives it a, a feeling of finely crushed velvet. There's a, a touch of sweetness coming from the vanilla and the tonka bean and it's got a bit of a, a Turkish delight type smell similar to like I mentioned in a recent video that I did uh, for Oud Cafe from Montal. This smells very expensive and sophisticated and although I'd say it leans slightly feminine in the opening the dry down is amazing and it's one that men can easily pull off. This has a massive projection and it lasts for easily a good eight hours. So performance quality is definitely not an issue. Uh, and if you enjoy rose heavy uh, fragrances, I would say definitely check this one out because it's, uh, it's a really good one and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, the third one on this list is called Beast for Men. And the perfume parlor code for this one is 0258. And this is a copy of Dali from Parfums de Mali. And yep, that rhymes. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. I've lost my way, I should have been a rapper. Um, yeah, the top notes in this one are mint, Amalfi lemon and bergamot. In the mid, there's rose, cinnamon, rosemary, African orange flower and lavender. And in the base, there's tonka bean, amber, patchouli, guayac wood and sandalwood. This one, um, Percival and Sedley are the most designer smelling fragrances from the Parfums de Mali lineup. And all three are really mass appealing and versatile. This one starts off really fresh and uplifting with mint combi uh, combining with the zesty lemon and the bergamot. I can also pick up on the lavender uh, and I'd have to agree with everyone who says that it starts out as like a, a polished version of uh, La Malle from Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, but with all the kind of rough edges rounded off. It dries down a touch sweeter though and then I think it kind of drifts more into smelling uh, more similar to like Mont Blanc Individual or Creed's uh, original Santal with that clean fabric softener type aroma. This smells really nice, but it's not one that I'd pay anywhere near the £200 price tag that Parfums de Mali place on it. However, this copy is one that I'd highly recommend for the summertime because it smells super clean and fresh, and it's guaranteed to get you a, a few compliments. It's not the longest lasting fragrance ever, uh, but it's not bad for a fresh year, uh, and that minty freshness projects really well for a couple of hours before it comes a, a semi-sweet, fresh laundry skin scent. Yeah, next up we've got one called Prelude for Men and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1660. This one is a copy of Overture Man by Amouage. The top notes in this are ginger, grapefruit, nutmeg, saffron, cumin and cardamom. In the mid we've got cinnamon and patchouli, uh, labdanum, geranium, mastic, uh, benzoin, myrrh, and in the base there's clary sage, incense, animal notes, leather, smoke and sandalwood. So I want to start by saying I'm sorry if I offend anyone who wears this and enjoys it because fragrances are subjective and they work differently for different people. But for me personally, this has got to be the worst smelling fragrance I've ever had the displeasure of smelling. And it's the only one that has ever made me feel sick to the point of having to scrub it off my skin. It smells like a cross between sweaty armpits and a dead animal. It's simply just disgusting and I can't believe how anyone would even want to smell like this. 
People who say that Karos smells uh, animalic need to just get the nose on this one and you'll have to re rethink what animalic is. Um, this is just weird. It's like a, a skanky cocktail of all the nastiest smells you can concoct and cram into one fragrance. I once lived in a house next to a large field and rats had get in underneath the conservatory so we called out the local renter kill who, who put loads of poison down and they sealed up the hole that they were getting in but the rats were kind of stuck there underneath the uh, underneath the conservatory and subsequently died and but they gave off the most appalling smell that we couldn't we couldn't just couldn't get rid of it for months and months and honestly that is just what this smells like and if that wasn't bad enough um, there's also like stale cigarette smoke and a horrible rusty type smell that just like some loonies out there are going to call fragrance art um, I'd actually recommend that you pick up the smallest sample of this from the perfume palette just so you can appreciate this horror show for yourself um, which is in my opinion simply grotesque it starts out unpleasant uh, but then it just gets worse and worse with every passing minute and it becomes a battle to see how long you can cope with it without either throwing up or just scrubbing it off your skin um, this is rank and uh, a great present to buy for someone who you don't like like your mother-in-law okay next up we have one that goes by the name of lots of fondness uh, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0326 this one is a copy of rolling in love by killian the top notes in this are almond milk ambrette and musk mallow in the mid there's iris and freesia and in the base there's tonka bean tuberose musk and vanilla this one opens up very smooth and creamy with the milky almond being the most prominent there's some light florals in there, uh, but I don't think there's enough for it to be classed as a, a feminine scent. Although, in, undoubtedly, uh, more women are going to gravitate towards this one rather than men. We've got some sweetness from the vanilla, uh, the tonka bean and the tuberose in the base. But it's not too sweet and everything just seems to be very well balanced. All the ingredients in this one produce a very soft and gentle scent profile and it reminds me a little bit of like toasted marshmallows. There's a, a small amount of iris which gives it a dusty texture rather than on, uh, a bit having a full on powdery vibe. Uh, and overall you get a fragrance that's impossible to dislike, that smells really gorgeous but for me it just lacks any kind of wow factor. This one I would say is a perfect work scent uh, that won't offend anybody regardless of how heavy you go on the sprays. It's like being hit in the, in the face by a fluffy pillow. So if you are looking for your, your next ultra masculine sex panther type fragrance, then this, this one definitely going to be for you. In terms of performance, you get moderate projection for a couple of hours and then it becomes a skin scent for a further two or three hours before it becomes undetectable. So overall, a likeable creamy almond scent uh, that's worth trying out, uh, but if you don't like it, I'm sure you, you can uh, pass it on to your missus, she'll take it off your hands. Okay, the sixth one on the list is called Deutschland Avenue. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1040. This one is a copy of 34 Boulevard Saint Germain from Diptyque. The top notes in this are fir leaf, citruses, cardamom, black pepper, green leaves, pink pepper, cloves, and cinnamon. In the mid, we've got iris, violet, rose, geranium, and tuberose. And in the base, there's balsams, um, eucalyptus, and we've got wood, woods and resins. Yeah, so from the initial spray, you're going to get some fairly dominant resins mixed with spices and a few florals. I can also pick out the black currant, and right off the bat, uh, this is a very unique opening that's fairly difficult to describe. It's, I'd say, fairly sweet with a bit of a clean, soapy, shower gel type aroma, uh, but it's not like a designer fragrance that's mass appealing. The resins in this one don't seem to belong there, and it's like putting a, a bunch of flowers in a, in a, in a mechanic's garage it's quite nice but it, it just doesn't belong there if that makes sense um this is this is one that i don't think is going to be a love at first sniff for a lot of people and it certainly wasn't for me i wasn't that keen when i first smelled it but now i kind of i don't mind it uh, as it dries down it becomes more fragrant and enjoyable but again i'd say that probably 
even though it's a unisex fragrance, I think more women are going to enjoy this one because for me it's just a little bit too floral for my own personal taste. And it smells to me like um, like when you get those little round bars of soap in a, an old fashioned B and B that smell like the, the inside of your grandma's handbag. You know, very floral but over the top floral. Um, the performance on this also is not very good, and after about the hour mark, you have to get in really close to to, to detect that you're wearing it. So, sorry guys, this one again is uh, is one that's not for me, and I wouldn't be recommending. And finally, the last one today is called Sour Prunus. And the perfume parlor code on that one is 1763. This one is a copy of Tom Ford's Bitter Peach, which is a recent release from the uh, Tom Ford's Private Blend Collection. The top notes in this one are Heliotrope, Cardamom, Peach and Blood Orange. In the mid, we've got Davana, Jasmine, Rum and Cognac. And in the base, we've got Vetiver, Styrax, Benzoin, Labdanum, Kashmiran, Tonka Bean, Vanilla, Sandalwood and Indonesian Patchouli Leaf. Well, if there was ever a fragrance that does exactly what it says on the label, then this is it. It's a slightly medicinal peach uh, that to me smells exactly like um, this peach scented air shampoo that my mum used to buy when I was a little kid. Uh, but of course the peach in this one is the main player. But the blood orange uh, brings the acidity and stops it from being too sweet. I think by adding the rum and the cognac, um, it's meant to take you down the peach snaps alcoholic drink route and not the 1980s air shampoo route when I was a kid, but I really don't get much in the way of the booziness from this one. This smells really nice, but it's just not something that I'd personally wear and I much prefer Tom Ford's Lost Cherry if I was going to go down the fruity route. This performs pretty well, and I think it's got a slight edge, a bit of better, proje better projection than the Lost Cherry. Uh, but I would say just give this one a try. It's, it's 14 pounds for a 30 ml bottle size, so you can't go wrong considering the original uh, will set you back around about 230 pounds for a, a 50 ml bottle size. I actually really do like the smell of this. It is really nice. It's just I don't I don't know when I'd wear it. Um, I mean, when when does a guy want to smell like peach or peach snaps? I don't know, but give it a go and see what you think. Yeah, so in summary, compared to my last episode, this haul hasn't been a unanimous success to say the least, uh, but there were a couple that stood out. I really enjoyed the Fruity Zerjoff Coro copy, and I'm going to check out the original the next time I'm actually in Selfridges for sure, so I'm looking forward to trying that one out. The Oud Satin Mood is a really nice classy rose fragrance, and I was really impressed with the quality of that scent. I also really like the Dali copy, uh, but just not with Parfums de Mali price tag. However, I'd highly recommend the uh, the Perfume Parlor clone if you if you want a, a really nice uh, rock steady all rounder. The Bitter Peach is, uh, I would say, a really brilliant copy and it's just like the original, uh, but it's not one that I'd personally wear, even though I really do enjoy how that one smells. Uh, the By Killian's uh, Rolling In Love copy is nice, but it's again, it's just not for me. And it's more of just a, an everyday scent that's way too pricey as an original for, for what it is. But yeah, the Perfume Parlor copy, by all means, pick it up and give it a test. But it's just like it. It reminds me a little bit of Santal 33. I'm not too keen on the Diptyque copy, if I'm honest, and it's not something that I would recommend you guys even try out. And as for the Amorage uh, Overture, that one is going straight in the butt, uh, straight in the bin. I I wouldn't wish that juice on my worst enemy. That is disgusting stuff. So that's about it for today's episode, uh, but I'll be back early in the new year when the perfume parlor reopens and I can place my next order. I'll also be creating a, a few more videos for the 365 project in between, so keep an eye out for them in between Christmas and New Year. If you enjoy these perfume parlor videos and find them useful, uh, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, so as always, thank you once again very much for tuning into this episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh guys, and have a lovely Christmas. Bye bye for now.